The 2017 Asia Pacific Rally Championship is two rounds down. The first was on fast cambered roads in New Zealand. The other on dusty Australian forestry tracks. So now it's time for the first of the Asian events. A very wet and muddy Malaysia, followed by the crazy fast roads of Hokkaido, Japan. As the cars line up prior to the start of Malaysia's Rally of Johor, current APRC champion Gorav Gill and his teammate Oli Christian Vaby are separated by just two championship points. The big difference is that Gill has driven this event many times before. While for Vaby, it's his first time in Malaysia. The Norwegian, though, has been getting plenty of seat time in European events. When I've uh, been doing Poland and Finland uh, in the WRC2 and uh, that's completely different from this. That's the, um, yeah, probably one of the fastest rally in the world and now, now into this, which is maybe one of the slowest actually. It's going to be a big challenge because of the heat, the humidity and of course for the cars, you know, the gearboxes and the tyres and the brakes, I think, are going to get really fried up. Challenging the MRF Skoda dominance are the Impart Mitsubishis and especially Finnish driver Yari Ketema, who competed here in Malaysia in 2016. But is that previous experience any help? Well, it helps a little bit, but this is like a major challenge, this whole rally. Like, it's, it's always a, like a real adventure, so everything can happen here. The weather is so unpredictable. Ramping up the competition is Japan's Yuya Sumiyama in Cusco Racing's new Skoda Fabia R5. Although it's his first time in a left-hand drive rally car, Sumiyama has adapted quickly in testing and is no stranger to Malaysia. A, a new car, yeah. Uh, Malaysia rally, uh, testing, fast testing, uh, very good feeling, uh, very uh, traction. The traction very good, uh, but, but uh, uh, stability very good, very good. New Zealander Mike Young returns to the APRC in a Group N Cusco Subaru and sees the first leg as a big challenge. Yeah, it's a big day, um, 80 um, k's per loop, so that's, that's massive for Malaysia, so it's going to be a big challenge. And, uh, it's going to be quite hot in the car as well, so that's one thing to think about, but hopefully we're fit enough and I'm sure <laughs> we will enjoy it. Not looking forward to the likely extreme heat is Robert Blomberg from Sweden, who's already questioning the length of the stages. Really tough stages, really long stages. I don't know why they put 32 k's on one stage when it's conditioned like this, because we're going to spend like 30, 40 minutes in the car in this heat, but uh, uh, it's going to be interesting and uh, hopefully we will... Uh, learn something new. Indian driver PG Abilash has finished all of the APRC rounds so far and he has some experience of the Malaysian event. Malaysian rally is all about endurance and it takes a toll on the drivers of the crew and on the car too and it's raining cats and dogs here so plan is to be on road finish the event. Also from India Sanjay Takali is lucky to be driving over the start ramp after his brand new AP4 Mitsubishi Mirage arrived in the country only three days ago and still needed assembling. His car arrived in the start zone with just five minutes to spare. The guys have worked really hard, haven't they? Well, amazing. I think it's magic. Magic is the word they did. I, honestly, I thought it won't be ready, to be honest. But they made it happen. Uh, big thanks to Empart, Graham and his team. They worked two days and two nights, I believe, and uh, they got the car ready. Immediately following the start ramp is stage one, a nighttime super special at Johor Circuit. It's won by Gill. Next day, the event moves to the palm plantations with a monster 31 kilometer stage to really test the crews. There's action and drama right from the start, with Vaby hitting a tree two kilometers into the stage. Luckily, the damage to the car is only cosmetic, and he continues with just a 20-second time loss. Yeah, I wasn't expected, expecting that the grass would be so slippery, so um, yeah, it was a little bit, little bit shock uh, on the first stage, but um, yeah, now I'm getting used to it, and um, I try to look and, and learn what, what, what the grip is, so um, it's getting better. Next to have a problem is Gil. 
also colliding with a tree. Unluckily for him, his incident is way more serious as the impact bends the steering. He loses over five minutes limping his Skoda to the end of the stage, then more time with roadside repairs, dropping him to sixth overall. I just turned 90 right and I caught more grip than I anticipated and uh, it, it just clipped the base of the tree. I thought it will just go over, but I think there was some big roots uh, on the base of the tree. After four stages and 80 kilometres of treacherous Malaysian roads, Ketamar is second. He has had to contend, though, with severe turbo lag. Then a broken front drive shaft leaves his Mitsubishi with just three-wheel drive for most of the morning. And then I needed to take the roll bar off on the st between the stages because otherwise it would have slide into the tyre and then had the puncture because the roll bar would have hit to the tyre so we would have even more problems. So it has been quite busy morning as a mechanic and as a, as a driver. After paying the price for going too fast too soon in Malaysia in past years, Young has taken a cautious approach and is almost surprised to find himself third overall at midday service. Crest middle 20, second crest middle 50 down, slippy to right. Mike, uh, yeah, you had a pretty good morning by the look of it. Yeah, I think we're third or fourth. Um, yeah, it's good considering the conditions and um, how hard we're going. We're basically just cruising through and, um, and being really careful. Anything that looks slippery, we're just uh, making it round. Um, but, you know, it's uh, been a good morning, but, you know, extremely challenging. So this afternoon's going to be even worse, I think. Um, it started to rain when we left up there, so just got to make it through now. Just 18 seconds behind Young is teammate Sumiyama in the Cusco Skoda R5. He's taken a cautious approach too, especially as Malaysia is not the easiest of events to learn a new car on, even more so when it's so slippery. Gil has fought his way back to fifth overall, just one minute behind Sumiyama. However, there's a huge challenge to be overcome before he and co-driver Stefan Prevost can think about winning. They are 6 minutes and 50 seconds behind leader Vaby. Sixth and seventh are the Impart Mitsubishis of Blomberg and Tuckerley. Without a cool suit, Blomberg is thankful that thanks to the clouds and the rain, the ambient temperatures are much cooler than usual. However, inside the cars, it's still 50 degrees centigrade plus. Every kilometre is a bonus for Tuckerley. Lucky to make the start and with no testing, he's using the opportunity to learn the characteristics of this new AP4 car. He spent many years driving heavier Group N cars and the new Mitsubishi is significantly lighter and faster. Right 8, 40, right 3. Behind Tuckerley, in eighth, is his countryman, Abalash. It's been a testing morning for the Subaru driver, breaking a drive shaft on stage two, then with only three-wheel drive, going off the road on stage three, losing lots of time and dropping to the back of the field. After the break, the slippery roads of Malaysia take their toll, with three retirements on one stage. In the first afternoon of Malaysia's Rally of Johor, heavy rain dumps more water on the already sodden stages, making some parts almost impassable. Stage six proves to be the worst, three drivers striking problems. Blomberg's the first to fall foul of the conditions, just two kilometres into the stage. Just sucked me in and I kept on going for like 100 metres to try to get up, but uh, since the damp is also uh, long out, the wheel got stuck, so we can't even lift it up with him with like 20 people here. Next is Sumiyama, who goes straight ahead at a junction and into a big ditch. With the help of the car's jack and local marshals, the car is manhandled back onto the road, and they continue, albeit close to exclusion for lateness. 
The conditions in the ditches also claim Tuckerley. <laughs> oh, no! One wheel just went off and then it just sucked, the corner just sucked the car in. That's it. It's, it's normal in Malaysia. With the aptly named fish pond cancelled due to flooding, the competitors tour back to Johor Circuit for another run through the Super Special and the end of day service. The service crews are kept busy just extracting mud, up to 80 kilos of it from each car. Unfortunately, Abolash is forced to retire from the event with a major gearbox problem and no spare. Day two dawns brighter, and out in the more open parts of the rally route, the road is drying. But under the canopy of the trees, it remains wet and slippery. The story of the day is Gould's charge back up the order. The MRF driver starts in third place, over two minutes behind second place Ketamar, and gets the gap down to 49 seconds after the first loop of stages. After another all-out attack, Gill goes into the last stage just 2.9 seconds behind Ketamar, and by the final control, he has secured runner-up spot by 19 seconds, but still rues his day one mistake. This could have been our rally, but I'm still learning, I guess. We all learn. Yeah, of course, we still have two rounds to go and, uh, you know, anything can happen. But uh, OC drove well as well, so, you know, he has good speed. It's exciting to be in the championship with him. Ketamar is gracious in defeat. He was caught off problems, but he's such a great driver in this, this event that really had off for him. He is doing a great job and I did what I can. While he has a good lead, Baby doesn't back off on day two, even having this intersection overshoot on stage 12. Oh, it feels really good to be here. It's, uh, it's been one of the most tricky rallies I've ever done, and um, to win it, it, uh, it feels amazing. Today has actually been very fun. Uh, conditions has been, uh, has been good, so um, yeah, it's been enjoyable. Behind the top three is Young, who's had a mistake-free rally and is relieved just to make it to the finish after two previous DNFs in Malaysia. Yeah, and no, third time lucky. Um, we've had some bad luck here in the past, so it's good just to come here and finish. Um, you know, we had a good time today, so it's been good, and uh, we're really looking forward to Hokkaido now. Young's teammate Sumiyama is fifth in the Skoda. After showing some good speed on his first ever event in a left-hand drive R5 rally car, he too is looking forward to Hokkaido, his home event. Leg two restarters Takali and Blomberg finished the rally of Johor sixth and seventh respectively. After the dramas prior to the event, Takali is happy to get valuable seat time as he comes to grips with his new car. I'm very happy and uh... I'm, I'm happy I finished this rally. New car, everything new, no clue about it. So that was the plan, and I almost stuck to it. So it's victory to Vaby by a whopping 4 minutes and 41 seconds, while Gill and Kitama are separated by just 19 seconds. The win takes Vaby 10 points clear of teammate Gill in the Drivers' Championship and the Worth Cup, heading to the next event in Japan. The fourth round of the FIA Asia Pacific Rally Championship, held on Japan's northern island of Hokkaido, has witnessed many championship battles since it first hosted an APRC round in 2002, and it's often delivered the championship decider. It promises to be no different in 2017, with MRF Skoda teammates Vaby and Gill looking to continue their fight for the championship title. We cannot relax now. It's um, it's going to be a good uh, good fight uh, for the for the victory in this rally. Also, I I know that for sure. Yeah, the championship is still quite open. Um, you know, we've got two more rounds to go, and uh, I want to make the most of it this round and try and uh, shut the gap with Osi. In part, Mitsubishi drivers Ketamar and Blomberg 
will be watching the MRF drivers fight at the front, but are not planning to wait around to see what happens. They need to be fighting for championships, so for sure it's a big fight for them. But I'm not, I don't want to wait anything. I will go flat out from the first dates. No stage are, are the same, so that's going to be a challenge. Uh, some are slippy, some are pretty fast, some have big ruts, but uh, we think we have the good setup, so we're going to attack them and see what we can do. As this is Cusco Racing's home event, Sumiyama is hoping for a good result in the team's new Skoda R5. Uh, my country and uh, Fabia uh, first challenge, I'm uh, feeling very good uh, and my challenge driving. Enjoy driving and uh, uh, is very better. Young has been entrusted with Cusco's development AP4 car, a Toyota Vitz, or Yaris as it's known outside Japan. Yeah, it's very exciting, you know, the new Cusco Racing Toyota Vitz is uh, really cool to drive and I think it's very special compared to Group N. Um, you know, you have to be a lot more aggressive into the corners, so it's going to be uh, very interesting tomorrow, but looking forward to the challenge. Tuckerley is looking forward to one of his favourite events in his new AP4 Mitsubishi Mirage. But it's more lighter, more quicker, more nimble, I think so. The power comes up very quick, so you have to be very quick and responsive, I think so. So it's going to be a challenge and it's going to be a learning process to drive this one too. Joining the APRC regulars is a big lineup of Japanese national championship drivers, including Atsushi Masamura, Tomohide Hasegawa, and Arestes Fuyuhiko Takahashi, who also competed in New Zealand and Australia. Following the autograph signing session and the start ceremony, the first stage is a one kilometre blast in the dark, with the fastest time going to Vaby in his MRF Skoda R5. Local Sumiyama is second quickest in the Cusco Racing Skoda. Coming up after the break, the jumps get higher and the landings get heavier. <laughs> Next morning at Japan's Rally Hokkaido, the competition starts with the 5km Rikibetsu spectator stage. Gil goes hard from the start, winning the short but tricky test and moving into a 3.5 second lead. Empart driver Kitamara's second quickest in his Mitsubishi, four seconds slower than Gil but half a second faster than Vaby. After two stages, the Cusco cars of Sumiyama and Young complete the top five. But this is the last we're to see of the Toyota. Minus 80, bump on the bridge, then... Six, Stage three, Kaniwa is one of the fastest and longest of the event. But only a few kilometres from the start, the Toyota begins to lose power. Six left short. Try to turn it off, maybe. Yep, I'll get round to the to another big straight. Young and co-driver Malcolm Reed soon pull over and retire. They are, however, only the first casualties for this stage. One car behind the New Zealander is Sanjay Tuckerley, struggling with a rear puncture. Tuckerley and co-driver Noriko Takashita are forced to pull over and change wheels when they realise they have two rear punctures. Takali does make it to the stage finish, but retires soon after. Up front, there's a fierce battle going on for the top three spots, and Vaby is on a flyer, seven seconds up on Gill and looking to take the lead. But near the end of the stage, his car suffers a broken shock absorber, and suddenly he's off. And that's still not the end of the stage three dramas. Now Ketamar arrives at this bridge at maximum speed, launching his Mitsubishi into a huge jump. As the slow-mo pictures show, the Mitsubishi lands nose first, ripping off the sump guard from under the engine. A few kilometres later, Ketamar retires with terminal engine problems. Gill, with four of his main competitors out of the running, moves into a commanding lead. 
Sumiyama is second, nearly two minutes behind the leader after opting for a cautious run through stage three. Japanese driver Atsushi Masamura briefly holds third place before breaking his gearbox on stage four. That moves Mitsubishi driver Blomberg into third, the Swedish driver really enjoying the fast and flowing Hokkaido roads. Behind, there's a good fight for fourth between Japanese drivers Satoshi Imai in a Subaru and Aichi Iwashita in a Mitsubishi Evo 9. This battle is eventually resolved in Imai's favour when Iwashita's car breaks its suspension during the repeat run through Kaniwa. Back in Obahiro after a 14-hour day and 120 kilometres of super-fast and very rough rally stages, the mechanics and engineers get to work on some battered cars. I'm, I'm happy to be where I am today. It's, it's been a very tough day. The stages are extremely rough already. Uh, we still have another day tomorrow and some part of the stages uh, are being used in the reverse direction from today, so it's going to be really rough and um, have to make sure that uh, we finish and the car doesn't pick up any damage. Uh, today very uh, good and very uh, try, try, try and very happy today. Yeah. Obviously uh, this afternoon you are pushing hard, maybe a little uh, uh, damage. <laughs> uh, could never uh, repeat the stage and jump, uh, little difficult. Day two sees Vaby return to action, trying to salvage some bonus points. Takali also rejoins. Sumiyama is spotted checking his car's oil at the beginning of the day, and it proves to be a serious issue. He makes it to the end of stage 12, but opts to retire the car when it's discovered oil is leaking from around the engine crankcase. His retirement promotes Blomberg up to second place. There's a scrap for third amongst the top local drivers. Imai leading the charge after 13 stages, followed closely by Fuyuhiko Takahashi in the Aresti Subaru. Up front, Gil keeps up his relentless pace to the finish, coming home to a rousing welcome from the team. Best of all, he's happy to be leading the championship by six points before the finale, his home event in India. Gaurav, it's got to be a fantastic weekend, really. It's uh, recovered your championship. It's looking good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, full recovery, I would say. Um, perfect uh, weekend, you know, perfect tyre choice. We had no dramas with the car. So um, overall, yeah, it's been a perfect uh, controlled weekend. It's a season best result for Blomberg, staying out of trouble while others either went off the road or had mechanical problems. Yesterday was fantastic. I just enjoy being out in the, in, in, uh, on the roads in the forest. Today it's been a little bit more surviving. I had some difficult uh, adapting to, to the tarmac, uh, slippery, and we had some brake issues on the rear, but uh, ah, say so and I had some margin, so reached the finish line and uh, that was the goal. After a torrid APRC season in 2016, Emai is happy to be third and credits his New Zealand co-driver Jason Farmer for his podium finish. For Vaby, it's clearly not been the weekend he wanted, losing his lead in the championship. It was a big disappointment uh, yesterday. Um, OK, now this was my time to have some bad luck and, uh, and we got it yesterday and we couldn't finish the day, but, uh, but today has been, been really good and we won the day, get maximum points that we, that we could. And um, yeah, the, the championship is still, um, still on and um, yeah, it will be a really, really um, exciting rally in India to, um, yeah, to make the champion. So uh, we'll aim for that for sure. For the second year in a row, Gil celebrates victory in Japan with Belgian co-driver Stefan Prevost. Team MRF celebrates too. It's easily won the 2017 APRC Teams Award. In the FIA APRC Drivers' Championship, MRF teammates Gil and Vaby are separated by just six points. While in the Asia-Pacific Rally Cup, powered by Worth, in which the results of all competitors count, the difference is 21 points. 
It's all set then for a classic championship finale at the Coffee Day India Rally, where MRF teammates Gill and Baby will be going all out in the battle for the title. Four, three, two, one, go.